to, hvad I, uh, I just... hvad I især glæder jeg allermest til lige i morgen. I well, want to hear what you're ex- the excited the most about tomorrow. Um, I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, yeah, det er jo sådan nogle kampe, man, uh, man drømmer om at spille. Og, uh, It's the kind of games you dream of playing. Uh, so the worst part is the waiting time. I can't wait to run out uh, on the pitch and, and play. Yeah, for me, for me, the same. It's the same for me. Um, how you you know how you prepare yourself for for the game. But playing uh, this kind of game is a huge opportunity. So it's something that we're very excited about. Thank you, Patrick. Stephen Kronemark, BT. Hi, Pierre and Casper. Uh, question uh, for Casper. How do you think uh, an eight-year-old Casper Smeichel living in, in Manchester back then would react if, if somebody told him that he would play England in such a game? It's always been a boy dream to become a, a football player and play for the Danish national team. So I probably would have believed it. Um, the road here is something you you get to know as you get older. But it's incredible to to be here and to be with these these boys. After everything we we've been together for the past 10 years, the journey we've been on together, it it's going to be a great moment. Alexander Tov is the next one. Uh, I want to ask about the uh, Hurricane Pierre. You play with him at Tottenham. What what kind of player is he? And have you given your teammates any advice about how to to play against him? And Michael Hurricane is the player in. Or well, you're you're the the keeper. Harry Kane has scored the most goals against. Uh, what does that mean to you? I'm gonna start. I don't need to introduce Harry Kane for anyone. Uh, behind closed doors, he's he's very professional. He uh, he's good at what he does. He's very dedicated. And he's just an incredible yeah. football player. So for me, Harry is the, the best player on, on that position. So it's, it's an honor to play with him um, every day. But I'm sure that with the in the with the defense we have, it's going to be tough for him. Well, I can't add anything. He is um, a world-class striker, someone who can always guarantee you a lot of goals during the season. So, a very dedicated and professional player. He knows where to position himself. He's very instinctive and. I would say that he is in among top three or top five strikers in the world. Thanks, Alexander. The next one is from NOS. Hello, this is Bert Malen from NOS Television. I think that at least four players of Denmark Uh, play in England, who start tomorrow in the in the starting eleven, and two of them are behind the table. Is that an advantage to play in England before such a game? Um, well, I don't know how you know our starting lineup, but um, mm-hmm. no, I don't think it's it's an advantage. Obviously, you know the players that you're coming up against, uh, but I think with uh, with the way scouting and uh, and analysis is conducted these days, you know. Every player you come up against, in, no matter what country they're from. So, from my perspective, no, I, I don't really see if that, that changes anything really. Pierre, anything on that? 
a little bit the same, you know. Uh, again, um, I think Euro European football is nowadays very, um, very popular, very, uh, very known. Um, but of course, uh, the players that uh, are in the England squad. Uh, some of us are facing them uh, for years now and uh, week in, week week out, and some of us are playing with them. Um, but again, tomorrow is a, a particular particular situation, and um, everybody wants to 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 bring out their A game. And uh, yeah, will be an interesting game. Thank you, Bert. And the next is Paul Ferdinand for Extra Bladet. Paul, let's go. Paul Ferdinand, Extra Bladet. Hi, both. Casper mentioned the pressure on the English team. You both know English football, and you probably know how much, how many expectations there there are on on England. Is there something that is um, an advantage advantage for you? Yeah, I think. I think when you have a team with so many world stars as England have, the expectations are always going to be high. They're a nation that, that loves football, they want success. I can't imagine that such a team is going to be affected by what the country expects from them. I just think they're as professional as, as we are and only focus on on the game. And they respect us and they know that they're facing a team that is very hard to beat. And they know that we're going to fight until the end. So I'm sure that um, Gareth Southgate is uh, going to make sure that they don't, they don't focus on anything else. Duncan Wright. Well, Wembley was a scene of such an emotional moment for you uh, after the cup final. It, it must hold special memories. You get the chance in the next day and hope for, uh, possibly four days to, to make more emotional memories. What, what are your thoughts on that? And for Pierre, England's midfield has been the key, the catalyst to, to their performances this season. They've not faced anything like you, though, in midfield, have they? What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think England's squad overall are fantastic. Their midfield as well. And the guys that also aren't playing from the start. Uh, when you're able to, to, to bring on a, a Jordan Henderson, um, I think it's, uh, it's a big, uh, let's say, Stample of uh, quality, uh, and again, we Denmark will try our best to uh, to do what it takes to uh, to bring the the um, the victory on our side. But we also know the the strength the strengths and the the forces uh, of uh, of England, and we have uh, again great respect for them, and um, we are ready to give them uh, yeah a, a big big fight. Uh, yeah, in terms of Wembley, obviously some very fond memories of it recently. Um, uh, I don't really know. It's, it's obviously going to be a, a different situation with it being the majority England fans. Um, you know, it, it's uh, it's not really something I've given too much thought to. Uh, it's a game, and it's a game that, that we need to win, uh, regardless of it being at Wembley or where else it, may, it might have been. We're going to take the last two or three questions, guys, uh, and uh, opening with Simon Peach from PA. Simon, please. Um, question for, for both of you, I, I guess. Um, I believe you're at Tottenham's training ground uh, doing this press conference. So, and obviously, Christian Eriksen has dominated the whole tournament for you guys. And um, how much? Has that brought the group together? Obviously, it's distressing, horrible circumstances, but we've all watched from afar how, how special this group has become. And you, I think you're the last team to beat England at Wembley. So, what does that what does that say about the kind of mentality you'll be heading into this game? I think this group has always been special. We've said it for many years. Um, 
it just came to light in a in a very uh, dramatic way. Um, but we've never been in doubt of of the uh, the, the collective strength and the uh, the spirit that we have in this team. It's uh, it's a unique experience playing with uh, with your national team. It's very very different to playing with your club team. Um, every single player in this team, you know, can't wait to go on international duty. Uh, everyone is is doing everything they can to to, to join up, and uh, you've got a. 26 players who, you know, more than half of them can't play, you know, because there's only 11 on the field and, and they're all, you know, supporting training. It's so, so hard. You've got a full support staff that's, uh, you know, that really, really loves representing their country. Um, like I say, we've always been aware of that. It's not, it hasn't, it's not because it's brought us closer together, but it's it's shown the world what we, what we knew we had. Um, I think what it has done uh, for the country of Denmark is that we have, as a country, experienced something uh, quite shocking. And um, that's definitely brought the country very close together. Uh, the support that we have seen uh, back at home is unlike anything I've ever experienced in my career, um, in my life. Uh, and unlikely maybe to even see anything like it again. Uh, but it, it shows what football can do. Uh, it shows the reason why we play team sports. Um, because when when one of your teammates is in need, then then he's you know, your, your mates are there for you. And uh, I think that's why we've uh, we've been shown so much love from from everywhere, but uh, but particularly at home. Yeah, Pierre. Anything on this? Or I think Casper said everything that that had to be said. Uh, yeah, I think Casper said it. Yeah, we'll take a next question. Thank you, Simon. Next from John Murray from BBC. John. We can't hear you yet. John, we can't hear you. I don't know whether it's your microphone or the system. No? It's his microphone, our technicians say here. You want to try once again? Sorry about that, John. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we'll take David McDonnell. David? Question for Casper, or for both of you, in fact. Um, with both of you playing in England, you'll be you know, very, very aware of the clamour for success for the England national team. and. It's been so long for this country, and you'll be in, uh, particularly aware of the phrase, it's coming home. Now, what would it mean to you guys to stop it coming home tomorrow night? Has it ever been home? <laughs> uh, I don't know, have you ever won it? In '66, it was home. <laughs> well, was that not the World Cup? Yeah, exactly, but I'm saying that, but the, the whole thing about a national tournament finally yeah. coming home, finally the actual <laughs> success this country craves, what would it mean to you to stop that coming home? Um, to be honest, I haven't given any thought to what it would mean to stop England more than what it would do for Denmark. Uh, I, to be honest, I've focused very little on the England national team. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's the, it's what it would do for our country back home. The uh, the joy it would bring for a, a country of of only five and a half million to to be able to to do something like that or to to compete with the nations that we're competing with. Um, so, uh, yeah, not really a lot of thought to uh, to England's feelings in this. Pierre, anything on this? No, Casper uh, said it. <laughs> That's fine. We'll have one last question, which goes to Theo from Liverpool Echo. Theo? Hi, this is a question for Casper. Um, obviously, you're opposing goalkeeper for England, Jordan Pickford. He's having an incredible tournament, keeping a clean sheet in every single game, someone you'll know very well from the Premier League. Just wanted to know what your thoughts of his tournament were and his, him as a shot stopper. Obviously, he's had a difficult start to the season with Everton, but he's managed to turn it around and he's in great form going into this game. To be honest, uh, I haven't really paid a lot of attention to, to what England have done. I haven't really watched... Uh, too much of other than the like the uh, the analysis stuff that we that we use, um, but obviously going through a tournament and not conceding a goal yet is uh, is an amazing achievement. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I hope uh, 
hope obviously that uh, that ends tomorrow. That's all Thank for you. now, guys. Time's running up. Thank you very much. Tusen Tag, go often, and we'll see you at Wembley.